Welcome to another edition of Believe in Giants. As the Giants are coming off a loss in Los Angeles, Bob Popo, along with the champ himself, the great Carl Banks. We were there ringside, as you'd like to say, in the boxing world for the Giants' defeat yesterday. And Carl, we got some promo codes to give out, and we're going to give an opportunity for people to save 50% off. And we have an idea for a Christmas gift. I'll explain in just a little bit. But, um, you know, we're coming off Thanksgiving. We're getting ready for the holidays of Christmas and New Year's. And everybody's watching their waistline a little bit. And everybody likes to look at calories. And they don't want to go too far off the edge. Yesterday's Giants game was loaded with empty calories. Because they were dead last in the NFL going into the game in red zone. They were three for three with three touchdowns. The final numbers show that the Giants averaged over five yards a carry in the game. They had 26 rush attempt for 130 plus yards, but all empty calories. When mm-hmm. it matters, they're not getting the job done. As you've had a chance to digest and look back at this game yesterday, um, well, what do we say to the Giant fan at this point? Um, hey, it's just not much other than, you know, I said, there's the operation is broken. I don't think much changed. Uh, much happened to change my uh, my position on that. And no delay of games, though. Yeah, but like that's just that's just part of the operation. They only had three penalties too. But when I say, well, you know, when I say it's broken, why? But let's just let's just explore something. Um, you know, this, and I'm not accusing um, giant coaches of this or coordinators, but there's this thing with coordinators in the league to kind of almost like campaign for a head coaching job while you're calling plays. So you want to look sexy in doing it. And uh, there are certain things that you, you think catch the eye of a potential suitor that may have a head coaching vacancy. I'm not saying that this is the case, but if a scouting report says to you as an offensive coordinator, you have a team that's ranked 31st in the league against the run, 31st, uh, not just this week or not over a two week period, over the season, they're ranked 31st, right? Yeah, and we're 12 games in going into the game. So right. it's, a, it's a legitimate body of work. It's not like some right. of the early season stats where they're a little bit uh, right. skewed. Right. So if, if your scouting says that to you and you can only manage to run the ball nine times in the first half, nine times, uh, and this is when the game was close. It's a seven-point game. And you can only manage to run it a total of nine times. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Uh, Because when you did run it, boy, it looked good. Saquon looked good. Booker looked good. Uh, They were moving guys off the line of scrimmage just the way that you wanted your offense to have the kind of confidence uh, that they need in a game like this. And all of a sudden you go away from it. Right. So that's, part of the thing when I say the operation is broken, right? Because you just, instead of, here's what I know. Winning is sexy, right? Uh, If you had to go on an interview and someone says to Josh McDaniels, you know, it's a passing league. Why did you run the ball 50 times against Buffalo? Josh McDaniels would say, because these were the conditions And this is what we felt we could do. And we executed very well and we won the game. Thank you. Next question. Um, So when I talk about the operation, that's part of it, right? Then I talk about um, how players have to value every possession because it matters. And if you don't value every possession and you miss a great opportunity, you may not get the chance to do it again. So um, you have two good plays. You throw a tight end 
in the flat, wide open, could probably run for another 15 yards. Um, your 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 um rookie tight end. tight end. Yeah. Um, this is the first possession of the game. After two first... successful runs, correct? Yeah, Barkley just uh Barkley had uh, a seven yard run after the opening throw to Galladay for five yards. Barkley ran for seven. Barkley ran for 15. So it's first and 10 at the Giants 42 yard line. And then, you know, you, all right. So Myrick is open in the right flat. No, no. Wide open. Wide open. And throw him not even a hard ball, not a difficult ball. One that hits him right in the hands. He drops it. You know what it, the end result of that drive is? A punt. So, well, but, but the next play, Booker runs for eight, and they shotgun spread formation, and they throw an incompletion. Yeah. And the result of that is a punt. But it goes back to the drop. It goes back to the drop. So operation broken, not coaching towards a team's weakness, not executing when you're wide open, right? So then you come back. The second, second drive, I think you had some good runs there. And no, all of the third us, drive, the second drive, they started at their own 10. Right. That was so three and out. second, which, which drive was it that Slayton dropped one that hit him right in the stomach? That's second uh, or third drive? I think the third drive. No, the second drive. Second drive. Okay. So this is exactly what I thought. So. Okay, so you're pinned back. I think it was a third and 10, was it? No, he dropped the first down play. Uh, yeah, no, that was that was in the second quarter when he dropped the one that hit him in the stomach where the guy was all over him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one. Yeah, I mean, it's little things like that. But, but here's the thing. Like, Darius Slayton, and again, not – I, I'm a fan of his, and if he and I were talking, I would have this exact same conversation. So don't think I'm ripping him, but I'm telling you right now, and I would say to him, bro, I don't recognize this version of you. I've never seen it. You weren't even this version of a receiver as a rookie. And I just think after that Washington uh missed uh opportunity in week two in week two he has not been the same i don't know what has to happen to get him back but he is just not he is he is not the same receiver he is not even the guy that walked through the door as a rookie you know it just i i you know just it, it's it's not the same and so you know these are things that just continue to plague uh, the Giants. And then here's, oh, well, you welcomed Kyle Rudolph into the organization in week 12, and he pays you off big dividends, and then he disappears for the rest of the game. So I want to speak to what I think a Giants fan is feeling right now, because I'm feeling it. When you think about the Giants and you think about success over the years, it's about imposing will. Mm. Okay. The Giants with a force defensively impose their will in two Super Bowls in smacking around Tom Brady. And in all those winning seasons, they got after the quarterback, they impose their will. Okay. They don't have those players on defense to do that. I understand that. Nor do they have the offensive line that they had. You know, in 2008, when, you know, they had guys running over a thousand yards for the season, mm -hmm. they had the three headed monster. But I think the thing that really frustrates a Giants fan about the game on Sunday is it never feels like the Giants try to impose their will. And this was a game and we talked about it in yeah. the preview podcast. This was a game. OK, I know my offensive line isn't great. But they're 31st against the run through the first 12 weeks. They are giving up 
2.8, uh, 4.6 yards per carry. They're 28th in the league. And I believe I'm just going to look at my numbers here. They were 30th in the NFL. They've given up 20, uh, 17 rushing touchdowns. Teams have run the ball against mm-hmm. them during the course of the season. So I sit there and I say to myself, why did the Giants, especially in the first half, not try to impose their will? And I don't know, you know a lot more about this stuff than I do. Zone scheme, stretch plays, power, whatever it is. But to concoct something where you find out, okay, we are not good at zone blocking or we're not good at this. But what we're going to do is, boys, we're going to fire off the ball. Mm -hmm. We're going to go with an extra tight end. We're going to go with a tackle eligible. We're going to have Eli Penny in there at times as fullback, or we'll do it out of a one back. And we are going to hammer the nail against a team that has proven over the course of the year they can't stop it. Yeah. And I think Giants fans would have felt better about the game yesterday, even in a loss, if the Giants tried to exploit what was the right. Chargers' weakness. And it goes right. back to the Patriots and the Buffalo Bills. Mm-hmm. You know, Saquon Barkley was a first round pick, he's one of your difference makers well ride him just ride and he him. it was there for him he was having such good runs and making great decisions and then you just decide well nine's enough for the first half we'll figure it out second half and this is the thing also that and i don't know if, if freddie's calling from a script or not right if you got something that's working the rest of those plays can wait like whatever's on the script, if this is working and they can't stop it, you don't have to come back to it. Stay with it. Get to the other stuff later when they figure that out. Again, the Giants don't have the Suburbanites, but everybody in their brother knew that Joe Morris was running the ball. Mm-hmm. And Maurice Carthon was leading the way and that old line again. Or Brandon don't... Jacobs or Ahmad Bradshaw. Yeah, or they've even done it. You know, like Luke saw it last year a couple times with like Alfred Morris and Wayne Goldman. Mm. Where pound the rock. And I think that's what's frustrating for Giants fans coming out of this game. Look, plus you're playing with your backup quarterback who all the more reason. Yeah. You know, and 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 again, you know, I always say that, you know, Bill Belichick, you know, has ruined it for a lot of people over the years because his teams have suffered injuries and all this other stuff, and they still have always found ways to overcome severe injuries Mm -hmm. and win. And that game, I can't get the game in Buffalo out of my head. They they basically held up a sign, like you see in college football, those signs (laughs) from the side. We're running, running, and they just did, and yes. They weathered a negative run here or there, but they kept hammering the nail yeah. and hammering the nail. Right. And it's like, I know you got all these other things that you want to get to, but let's let's try to make the Chargers say uncle. Well, here's the thing about that. All these other things that you want to get to. The end result is you want to get to a victory. So if you only use the blue and the red crayon. You're perfect if that's what's going to get you to the W. But when you just start pulling crayons out of the box and you try, it's like, okay, here's a, a perfect example. <laughs> we were, we were um, after the game, we were having a bite to eat. And I said, it's, it's, th- this is the equivalent of giving a child in a high chair a bunch of crayons and they just scribble stuff and hold up the paper and say, do you like it? The double reversed toss back throw behind the line of scrimmage that was a whole lot of nothing right it was like and and then here's the thing about it had they just handed the ball to barkley when if he would have just kept it instead of tossing it back he'd have still been running but it was like okay we're gonna do a double reverse toss back pass and we're gonna throw it to the guy behind the line of scrimmage and it goes nowhere it was just like a lot of scribbling, right? But when the red and the blue crayon was working for you, it's going to be there, you know? And we were, we were in the stadium, so we could, you know, we're seeing the whole field. And where the, where, the, where the booth is, it's like in Dallas or Arlington. 
it's the same exact location. So the back corner of an end zone, but it's it's high enough so that we're almost like an all tw- we're almost like a high end zone look. Yeah. So we could see it coming toward us, and it's like they're doing all the stuff even on the flea flicker, and not one guy on the Chargers bit. I mean, the deep route, the drag route, everything. I was think that's when I hit the cover. mute button. I I didn't hit the mute button on yeah, that one. You hit the mute. You hit the mute button. It, but it was it was like the only thing I could think of is when my kids were young, and we used to go to either TGI Fridays or Friendlies. And they give you a little pack of like four or five crayons in it and one piece of paper. And they just scribble, just try to make sure they use every single crayon. And then they hold up the paper. Daddy, you like? <laughs> and it's just, but it, it, you cannot be so out of touch that you're going to ignore where your tendencies, uh, where another team's tendencies benefit you. You know, it's just it's that's a play without a rhyme or a reason. If you ask me when you could just run the ball and get you 12, 14, 17 yards, you make it easy. Like you said, they didn't move like the Chargers were just they were just there like, OK, whenever you guys get done, show us your paper. You know what I mean? And it's like but when you can get 14 with Booker or with Barkley, that's what they're afraid of. That's the stuff that you got like you got to you got to pound that. And so. Again, talking about the operation, coming back to that, those are the things that are broken, right? That is where, you know, coaching, players, the operation has to function better. It has to function towards victory. It can't be fits and spurts. And then, you know, talk about operation. Your punter on a fake punt throws it into the Gatorade. You know, and it was, it, listen, it's not like they don't practice that. They do it. I know they do it. Um, yeah, and they don't call it if they don't believe the player can make the throw. Correct. They're, they're only calling it because they believe they've seen him make that throw to a, a satisfactory enough level that, hey, we sure. can try this in the game. And it was open. Oh, wide open. And this is not a case where, the player ran out and he threw it in or the player ran in and he threw it out. He just straight sailed it into the Gatorade. Like operation, like value every possession. That possession gives you, keeps a drive alive and gives you an opportunity to get back into the game. But like, this is what is plaguing this team. The brokenness of this team is the lack of execution across the board the lack of situational awareness, it just, you know, yeah, they cleaned up penalties and they didn't have, they had zero delay of games, but then they had not great execution. Yeah. And I mean, listen, you know, you talk about, and we've talked about it a zillion times and and the teams that win play complementary football. And it's always all three phases have to work in concert and so on and so forth. And let's face it, Carl, any giants fan watching the game, Anybody associated with the football team, us as broadcasters, everybody. I mean, the final minute and 40 seconds of the first half just sort of encapsulated Mm -hmm. what this team has been dealing with, not just this year, but over the previous, you know, chunk of years. And, you know, you take a look at what happened. So, you know, just to recap it, because I, I just want to go through it again, because I guess I'm still a little bit stunned by it all. But your defense rises up and you get a three and out and you get a bad punt. You start at the 41 yard line. You know, you've got a minute 40 to go in the half and you still have two timeouts remaining because they, the Giants called their first timeout um, before the uh, Justin Herbert pass. Mm hmm. Uh, or no, after Kelly made the catch on the third and 11, they called the timeout to stop the clock. All right, smart. They have all three timeouts inside of the last two minutes of the first half. You use that there, force them to punt the football, and then you start at the 41. You got a minute 40 to go. Again, Saquon Barkley is your guy, okay? And immediately, and Mike Glennon is your backup. And immediately the first play is a throw, incomplete. 
Second play now, everybody and their brother knows if they're going to throw it, they're going to just check it down to Barkley. And the Chargers are right there. That's a loss of two. Um, And then a pass to Booker, you know, is incomplete. And next thing you know, you're punting the ball away. And you sit there and you, you just say to yourself, okay, they're 31st against the run. Yeah. Barkley's your, have it, Barkley had it going. What's your best run play here? What, yeah. what, is, uh, what, what is our, are we running left, are we right? Are we running off the right guard? Are we running off the left yeah. guard? Are we running, are we, are we faking, faking an inside handoff and maybe tossing it to the outside with Booker and Barkley? And the, we're coming up with something, but we're going to yeah. run the football and we're going to attack what their weakness is. Mm-hmm. So now we talk about complementary football. So you go three and out. You're extremely deflated as a football team. So you started at the 41. You're punting from their 43. So the series loses two yards. And then your punter hits an 18-yarder. Like you can't have yeah. – you, you've, got, you, you've got to put the ball in a place with 40 seconds to go in the half where the Chargers have to be kind of careful. Yeah. And they've got to be probing. And, but instead – they start at the fifth, the 25 yard line, which is just like a touchback. And okay, now we've got a couple timeouts to go and we got, minute. yeah, when we, we've got 40 seconds and we've got a stud quarterback. And then what happened at the end of the half, I know Logan Ryan stood up after the game and in dealing with them and talking with the media, you know, he put ownership on himself. Um, but you, that, cannot be allowed and to be outscored 59 to nothing this year in the final mm-hmm. two minutes of the first half is a stat i still can't believe I'm, I'm uttering well again operation is broken bob it, it's it's again it was the same things just a different location um and it look this this defense was not very good yesterday either in on regular downs they got run on they got run on pretty, pretty good too. So, I mean, they, they bend, but didn't break, but there were some, there were some plays, especially against the likes of a Justin Herbert. You need to stop one phase of that team in order to get him contained. And, uh, you know, we see why this kid is something special because just, just the, the, the seam route at the end of the half, as he's falling down, he puts it right out there. In stride, and, you know, yeah. in the, and, and Carl, you're hundred percent right. There were gaping holes and, and we're in the building. And again, when, when the play is going away from us, especially with the chargers, it was so easy to see these holes. And in the first half, you know, the chargers had 17 rush attempts to the giants nine. Hmm. They had 86 yards rushing. They averaged 5.1 a carry. And a touchdown. And you're right. The Giants' inability to control the run in the first half really opened the door for the Chargers to be able to move the ball. Because, listen, on the Chargers, Chargers are known for chunk plays. Yeah. And on that first drive, there was no chunk plays. They were, they were methodically moving mm-hmm. it down the field. And, again, it, the Giants not able to shut off the run. The middle, the gaping holes in the middle. I mm-hmm. mean, gaping holes. You know, I was talking to Blake Martinez on the sideline before the game. And, uh, you know, he had been traveling with the team and just wants to help in any way he can. He says he's starting to feel pretty good with his rehab and everything. And I was thinking as I was looking at those gaping holes, I'm like, my Lord, do they miss him? Yeah. Yeah. Just somebody who can at least put them in a stunt, put them in something if he sees, um, if he sees uh, uh, something developing where they're going to consistently give it to him, but it's um, they, they did not defense did not perform well in um, any phase. They had their moments. Uh, Obviously they, they could have kept them in the game if you had a little more offense, but look, this is enough to go around for everybody. Um, And so where are we now, Bob? I mean, before before we get to where are we now, I want to give everybody the promo code because you know, I've been holding out on them. Yeah. You know, uh, Bet Online is the number one spot for basketball, football action. If you sign up today, you're going to get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. The promo code BELIEVE50 
and you give yourself that bonus. Bet online, the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts again. Use the promo code Believe50 and you get 50% off your first deposit. That's the welcome bonus. At the end, I'm going to give everybody a Christmas idea. If you haven't, if this is your first time here to believe in Giants with Christmas right around the corner, uh, there is an opportunity for you to come up with a very bright gift. I'll explain in just a little bit. So where do we go from here? Well, you got four games left, and uh, it's just about evaluating right now. Um, I don't think this team is moving on from Daniel Jones. So if he's healthy, he needs to play. Uh, if Kadarius Tony is healthy, he needs to play. Um, and he needs to give us something to look forward to for next year. Uh, Andrew Thomas has put together a pretty solid season. Uh, he needs to continue. Um, had an opportunity to really get a look at Saquon Barkley yesterday and they, for some, some inexplicable reason, decided, eh, well, you know, not enough. We, we don't need to see enough of him. You know, there's his, he's answered all the questions, right? Uh, but, like, continue to get him going. He still has another year on his contract, whether they exercise it or not. Is that correct? Yeah, they already picked up his rookie option. Right. So he's, he's playing another year. Um, so let's, let, let's see if they can build some momentum coming into – uh, next year and just continue to evaluate these guys, man. It's that's where we are right now. Trying to get a victory. Yes. You want to see, because you want to see this coach continue to grow as well. Um, and then, you know, whatever's going to happen uh, in terms of changes in personnel and in, in coaching and in, in any other area that these owners decide is necessary. Um I trust, I know that these, this ownership uh, group, both families, they want what's best for the team, you know, and, and, and I, I see a lot of people trashing family members that are in the front office and you just have no idea. You have no idea. Like you just associate a name and you see it with a title and you say, ah, he needs to go too because he's making too many of the bad decisions. Well, there are a lot of other people in that. And then that that process is more diplomatic than um, people think it is. It's not like one voice, and if his last name is Mayor, it's the it, it. This is how it goes, and we don't know. You don't know what you don't know. Let's just put it that way. Is that safe to say? Yes, I think that's safe. Yeah, there's you know some of the chat rooms and stuff like that. They're just it. They're just off base. I understand. I mean, how would they know? But they don't. Um, yeah, I, I want to, I want to say something we, from the, from the game on Sunday, just going back to it for a second. Look, I know Nate Solder has become a poster child for giants fans and giants media, uh, people that, you know, people on social media will take these clips of him, you know, having a no hitter. And he has certainly struggled at times this season. He's out there fighting. He's one of the the real good guys. And I know fans don't want to, you know, Bob, just shut up. We don't care how mm. good a guy he is. He's, he doesn't play well. I got that part, but you know, yesterday I saw some stuff about, you know, kind of the no hitter that he, man, it wasn't complete. No hitter no. where Bosa gets the sack and the force fumble, but you know, Bosa finished the game with one tackle and one sack. And it came on that play. And, you know, this is a story about offensive linemen. You know, an offensive lineman can play a pretty solid game. And then it's one misstep or it's one bad play that gets magnified. Now, yeah. I know you you were a defensive player, um, but, you know, it doesn't tell the whole story. And I just well, I saw people trash right. him. And I was it, like, it, you know, can you be fair? Because well, yeah, both, both is an all pro player. And if Bosa was quiet the entire game, he didn't impact the game at all. That tells you that Nate Solder was doing a pretty good job. And even on that sack, Nate got him, got a hand on him, pushed him wide. If the quarterback steps up, Bosa doesn't make that play. I can tell you that now. So it that has to be complimentary of, of you know, complimentary football too, quarterback tackle. When you know you got a speed rusher, 
and you know how you want him blocked, if you can get part of that, then it's up to you, the quarterback, to know that, okay, this is my speed guy. I'm going to have to step up in the pocket here just in case he doesn't get enough on him. So, I mean, listen, um, you didn't hear Bozo's name. He had one tackle the whole game. Nate Soda did a heck of a lot right more than he did wrong. Yeah, and I mean, look, and and trust me, folks, I'm not saying that, you know, he's the answer, he's the future, whatever. I'm just saying, like, in, in an effort of fairness. Yeah. It's well, in an here, effort of fairness. Here's another one that it's not it's now starting to pop up in my timeline. Well, you know, the Giants, look what they did. They got rid of Eric Flowers too soon. He's doing really good in Washington. I'm like, Eric Flowers, number one, is on his fourth team, second go around with Washington. Um, so that makes him six years, seven years in the league. So that you want the Giants to wait six, seven years before he figured it out. To and by the guard? way, yeah, to be a guard. Wait, wait a minute. Wait. Jacksonville tried to make him a guard, too. If, I mean, Miami tried to make him a guard, too if my recollection serves me right. And it yeah, didn't work out. A couple teams have, yeah. And okay. So, your point. so you can't have it both ways. Like when you go see a player doing something, listen, more power to Eric. I'm happy for him. Um, he's sandwiched in between two really good players. So he's not as exposed and that's a good thing. Right. And he can continue to make a living, get more and more contracts. And I'm happy about that, but be under no illusions it took him five trips, uh, five different teams to figure it out six, seven years later. So um, if you're willing to wait that long for a player to figure out he needs to be at guard, because when he left the Giants, he went to be a guard somewhere and it didn't work out. So, and it finally did and good for him. But like, let's not be hypocritical about, you know, what you see later on down the line and what you saw here. Yeah, and if you ask, and anyway, if you ask anybody that understands the position, which you know, and I and I refer to our buddies who are former offensive linemen, many of his same technique flaws still exist. His Hold first it, move, leaning and grabbing. His first move is lean and grab. Yeah. Now maybe as a guard, you can get away with it a little bit more because it's tucked in there and it's in tight quarters. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's that's a that's that's one of those 2020 hindsight, silly narratives. Yeah. That, um, you know, we don't really take the cheese on that one, but listen, we know Andrew Thomas is progressing. Well, um, I don't think they're going to give up on Matt perk cause he's a young kid and he's not cost him a lot of money. He's got to get better, but they're going to, they're, they're good. They have a lot of draft capital. Uh, they've got to use it wisely. And it, this is one of those, where best player available meets need drafts for the Giants. It is, you need this, you better get the best player available. It's no longer, you know, uh, we'll take whatever position that the best player is at. Nope, you got positions that need to be addressed. Get the best players best players available at those positions. Yeah, and, um, you know, I, I, I don't think I'm speaking out of turn here or out of line here uh, in making the statement, but, I mean... They have a lot of needs. Yeah. So it's it's almost like whoever the best player is in the draft when they're picking is probably going to meet a need because they have quite a bit of needs. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, they got to keep trying with offensive line until they get it right. I mean, that's exactly what the uh, Washington football team did, too. They just kept drafting, kept drafting uh, both offensive and defensive linemen until they got – they got a good core group on both sides of the ball. Yeah. And I mean, and again, the giants, they have to come up with, uh, you know, looking forward. I mean, they need to find in the draft, develop a player in the, or, or get a player in the draft who the other team, when they're game planning against the giants, you're game planning because you are fearful that that player can wreck the game. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and it's gotta be a front seven guy. I mean, I yes. think, I think teams certainly, um, view Xavier McKinney as a guy that, hey, we can't make mistakes. We can't be sloppy. We right. can't be lazy with our eyes because if we do, if we don't run a crisp route here, if the ball's not delivered on time, this guy's driving on the ball. This guy's making plays. So we got to watch out for him. But in the meantime, 
They need somebody in the front seven that is going to cause the opposing offensive coordinator to have to game plan for. And right now they don't have that player per se. They have a, a young emerging player as an edge, but they still need to get another one and get more like him uh, where they could just bring players in waves. I mean, yeah, everybody's losing their mind over Micah Parsons and he is quite a sight to behold, right? Well, that ship sailed. So what's next, right? Um, there are more ways to get this done. You just got to, you just got to find the right players to do it. Want well, to uh, remind everybody about this time of year with the holidays coming and uh, you don't want to give a dull gift, right? You want to give something that sparkles, something that's bright, something that's got a little bling to it. Well, cutting edge technology and innovative techniques. That's what light box lab grown diamonds are all about. The highest quality at a light price, 800 per carat. They have the same chemical makeup as natural diamonds, but grown in a lab. You get all the colors, blush pink, beautiful blue, clear white. Lightbox lab-grown diamonds are the perfect gift. It'll make any outfit sparkle. So you want to learn more about it? Go to lightboxjewelry.com, add sparkle to your holiday shopping. Lightbox diamonds, there's never a dull moment. Carl, it doesn't get any easier. We'll get into the Cowboys later in the week in our preview. Um <clears throat> How do we lift up the Giants fans' spirits here in closing? Because, you know, my timeline, like your timeline, our, our Twitter handles, um, I can't – there's so many fans just – you can feel their pain. I'm looking at this stuff after the game. People are like, I, 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 for the first time in my life, I turned the game off. I listened to you and Carl on the radio in the second half. I couldn't watch it. I went about and did things. I had the game on, but I couldn't bear to watch it yeah. anymore after what happened in those final uh, minute 40 of that first half. Um, hey, look, there's Here, four games to go, man. Here's what I'll t listen. This will be a great exercise right now. Cause there are a lot of guys that they go out and they look at film and they, they want to become film junkies. Start to evaluate some of the young draft choices. Spend a little time watching what they do. Like Ellison Smith was brought to my attention. Um, just some of the, the good things he's doing, right? Um, and then just look. Look at, you know, guys that, that can make a difference going forward. Uh, the inconsistency of Lorenzo Carter, but when he's in there, he does have an impact. Is this all he's going to be, right? Um, Zimenez is a, is a no-show right now. He's, he's just been cast because Ojolari is doing a better job. But like, if, if as Giant fans, look at these draft choices. Look at last year's draft choices. See where they're tracking, how they're tracking. Are they part of a really good core nucleus? You know, you hear the, you hear the head coach talk about, you know, a foundation. But there are a few foundation players you probably don't see them in that context yet, but like Xavier McKinney, right? Old Jalari, um, Cam Brown, who's a hell of a special teams player, is going to play in this league a long time at the rate he's going on special teams. Uh, he was one of the big reasons why they got that onside kick. Um, but just start looking at guys like that gives you an opportunity to break down. And really, you know, when you want to look smart in the draft, look at some current players and say, okay, this guy we can count on. I think he's going to be a starter. He's going to be good depth for us. We need to, you know, do this position, start to have those conversations now, you know, that, that will occupy enough time to kind of, you know, shield you from the emotion of wins and losses. And now you're just looking at performances. Yeah. And I was like a fan in the fourth quarter when I said, Hey, um, why don't they, why don't they mm -hmm. throw from in there? I mean, yeah. just to see what he's got. I mean, he's never taken a snap in an NFL regular season game. Sign him off the practice squad. Uh, but then I went against my own credo of this. These coaches are at practice every day. They are, mic you know, they micromanage everything. They're in the meetings. Then they watch tape of the practice. They watch film of the practice. They watch all this stuff. My guess is their natural inclination would have been with eight minutes to go in the game or seven minutes to go in the game or six, yeah. five minutes ago. 
Hey, you know what? Let's give Fromm a look. But they they had no confidence at that point in time, based on the limited amount of practices he had, and maybe what he showed or didn't show as far as just command. Right. That they didn't put him in. So I said it during the broadcast because I was feeling like a fan at that point. But I kind of did go against my credo of, you know, that's a tough position to just roll a guy in <laughs> yeah. to take a look. You could throw a guy in at corner. You could throw a guy in at safety. You could throw a guy in at backer. You could throw a guy in as an edge rusher in mop-up time. But, you know, you put a guy in at quarterback, that affects the entire operation. Yeah. So yeah, it does. I was a fan during the broadcast in the fourth it's quarter. Okay, maybe to... we'll see him at some point. Maybe they say, okay, we might want to bring you back to camp. You might be our guy to bring back to camp. So they're going to have to get a little bit out of him. But um, right now, the way this schedule is breaking for the Giants, I don't know if it's it's going to be in a in favor of a giant blowout victory that they put him in or there's nothing else to gain uh by keeping the you know this current quarterback in so get in there from you know all right so folks uh again if you go to bet online and you're a new user with the updated desktop and mobile site uh here it is 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit use the code believe 50 Carl, I know that uh, the fans have lost belief at this point, but uh, you got to look for little things. If you're watching and listening to this podcast, you're a true blue Giants fan, so you care passionately about the team. You care enough to invest your time to watch any kind of wisdom or insights that we could bring to the table. So as Carl said, try to look for little things right now. Um, Try to look for things where you can say, okay, this is a guy that's going to be part of the solution. Where this guy is going to be has been part of the problem, and you start to, at least in your mind's eye, give you some things to kind of get focused yeah, on. Yeah, and have those debates. Have those debates amongst your friends, you know, um, because some of the debates we're having now, it's just you're just basically saying the same thing a different way, you know, and arguing it. But look at some of the players, evaluate some of you know some a block of plays for them, and then make the case: should they be there? Or should they not? Keep the faith. Tell a friend to tell a friend. To tell a friend. And we try to bring some clarity. Uh, we try to bring some perspective to these things. Um, and Carl obviously has years of experience playing this game at a high level. So um, tell a friend. And, and hopefully, at least we can give you some reasonable expectations. Um, and maybe but, even reasonable explanations sometimes, too. Yeah. I think that's what I think that's what I was trying to say, but I got my words mixed up, kind of like me having a hard time saying the word YouTube. YouTube. Yuba duba. You got a busy week this week with G three apparel. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, we're getting some starter gear in that's shipping out to stores for the holidays. So yeah, we got a few things going on. You know, I, I, I've had a very, over the years, traveling for Golf Channel, I've had a, a mixed bag of experiences with United, but I have to say that our United flight home from Los Angeles was very comfortable. The flight staff was outstanding. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they got us in early, man. You know what? Getting in early on the red eye from L.A., yeah. uh, San Francisco, Phoenix, Vegas, or whatever, getting in early is imperative because if you get in too late, your day is lopsided. You're upside down. Yeah. Not just that, but if you get in too late and you live where we live near the Hudson river, now you get caught in rush hour traffic. Yeah. Cause I can't, I can't remember when we came home from I don't know where we came. It was a long trip, but we came home from somewhere. Yeah, and we were caught in it. Two hours. I got two hours to get home from the airport. All yeah. right. Tell a friend to tell a friend. We'll be back later in the week with a preview of the Giants and Cowboys from MetLife Stadium next Sunday. Carl, always a pleasure. Always, my man. Always. Tell a friend to tell, tell a, a friend. friend. Believe in Giants. Papa Banks pod.